Welcome everyone to another episode of The Train Studio. I'm your host, Sean Morris. Today in The Train Studio, I've just been working a little bit on the 28 mil project. Not a full day's work today, but uh, just got a few of the odds and ends taken care of, and I'm still kind of got some things that working on, but uh, I'll show you kind of the progress and where I'm at today and what I've been working on. Uh, so you notice that the tank is uh, missing. Um, actually, I'm just working on that. Just got the pinhole here, so the tank's going to be situated right here. That's kind of where I decided to, to go with that. Um, I finished up uh, working on the guys. Obviously, I got uh, all of them uh, positioned, sort of in their uh, in their final locations. I went ahead and I'm not sure if you guys will pick this up, but I went ahead and added the mud to the boots, so um, that just helps them secure them a little bit more. Kind of blends them into the uh, to the base and kind of gives them that look. You know, they wouldn't be walking through all this and uh, retain the cleanliness of their uh, their boots. So. That's just been sort of incorporated. It's it's a it's a functional thing, you know, that it uh, it helps secure them a little bit better, and then also an aesthetics thing that you know puts them in place, um, showing that they're uh, you know that they've walked through this. So likewise with the guys up front here uh, as well. So um, I, I I've added the uh, leaves uh, to the uh, roof. I really like this effect, and I realized that you know the leaves wouldn't always you know stay on the shingles and wouldn't always be sort of um, laying in the same pattern, but this is a snapshot of a, of a dramatic scene. So I really wanted to get me imply maybe that there's some wind picking up and, and kind of things like that. So there's some, you know, leaf litter blowing around. And so I really wanted to snapshot that roof. And another reason I want to put a heavy accumulation on the, on the shingles, you know, it's kind of trickling down. So, um, you know, running down into the gutters as well, as I mentioned. So you know, they're filling up and things like that, but I really wanted to accommodate for or account for the leaf litter in the in the roof area. So, you know, I got some here. Um, what I did is I did some some fine layer uh, leaf litter. You know, this is like freshly laid stuff. I'll show you the backside too. You know, it's just coming uh, here as well. It's not on every part of the roof, but you know, it's, it's, it's around and it's obviously actively blowing around. And, you know, kind of getting in a late fall maybe and, uh, you know, not all the leaves are, are dying off, but, you know, that we have the dead trees kind of indicating, you know, that it's starting to uh, to lose its leaf litter as well. Um, and then also I have some sort of clusters of leaves as well. And this would sort of account for leaves that have been in there a little longer. You know, they're starting to kind of blow up and kind of gather in piles. So that's just, you know, what I was thinking with this. So that, you know, it might not be to everyone's taste, but I kind of like the the splash of, of leaf litter on the roof and you know it, it really just accounts for you know why there's so much leaf litter around and and sort of um, that sort of a reasoning that sort of a rationale I guess so uh, I'm happy with how that turned out and it was uh, really kind of easy I just sort of sprayed the roof with some scenic cement and went in and you know I placed some leaves and the rest I just kind of scattered around and I went as far as you know there's a little bit of a hole right here in the uh, in the roof uh, sorry, in the attic, and that sort of extends down into this room. So what I did is I went in and I added, you know, just a small amount of leaf litter, but you can account, you know, if there's a hole, then, you know, leaves and wind are going to find a way to get through. So um, sort of just put that in there. It's hard to see. But uh, likewise with the door here, uh, you know, we had some leaf litter around here. Obviously, the heavy accumulation that's right here would account for the accumulation that's in the doorstep. And then um, going into the building as well. So what I did is I opened the door is open. So um, that would imply probably if there is wind and gusting, you wouldn't get any right there. But you'll notice that I have kind of this sweeping. Um, kind of hard to see for you guys, but maybe I can move this down and show you that. A little bit of shadow, but um, you can see that there is some leaf litter, but not right at the door. So it's just kind of pushed back a little bit indicating that the breeze kind of um, moved out of the way. So there's kind of a rationale for the reasons that I did things. And like I said, it's maybe not to everyone's taste, but uh, it is what it is. And, and there you go. So um, I got the mattress in. I think you guys have seen that, you know, the burnt out uh, look. You can kind of see it a little bit better there. Um, added a couple playing cards to the floor too, because I just indicate, I was thinking, you know, maybe if that door had been uh, swung open or if they decided to swing it open for any reason, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe the wind did that, a few cards may have got uh, got scattered on the floor. So um, this room's starting to get finished. I may do a, a bit more, but uh, I'm not going to go too heavy on in all the rooms because I don't want to, uh, you know, detract uh, from what I want you to be looking at. And But I do want to indicate, you know, that, uh, you know, there is something going on in these rooms. So 
I think I'm probably going to go ahead and add the guys in the basement as opposed to the attic, because I think the attic's got enough going on, and I don't really want to uh, to make it look, you know, like it's been used at all. I really want to make it look abandoned, so um, I'll probably leave that as is, and maybe just do a little bit of work on the basement, so... That's um, where I'm at with uh, everything here. So basically, all the guys are in position now, minus the two, um, and pretty much all the weathering's done here. Somebody had asked me about maybe crawling up some plants up the uh, up the chimney. I'm not really sure if I'm going to do that because it's you know the garden's kind of at the bottom, so I'm not really sure that um, they would have uh, allowed you know a creepy crawly to go all the way up the building. But um, you never know. If I get some time, I may uh, I may look at doing something like that. Uh, maybe particularly around the downspout, you know, because there would be some water accumulation there and, you know, that would lend itself to, you know, growing growing plants and things like that. So, um, and then with the barrel there as well. So maybe I'll do a little bit of crawling up uh, just along the side there. Um, time will tell. And what I'm working on right now is uh, two things. Um, I, there's the pin that's going to go in for the tank. Just got to be careful because I have uh, some wet ink on here so what I'm doing right now is I'm doing the same sort of uh, mud I can't see that at all but let me try to light maybe that'd be better for it yeah there we go so I'm doing the same sort of mud effect uh, that I did on the road I realize that lights a little harsh there we go turn that off um, so right now it's in the second stage so it goes on in kind of that earthy tone so it's really kind of that bright brown and then I go in with um, the Vallejo uh, ink, the uh, sepia, I believe, is the color. Let me just check here. The bottle is disastrous, but um, yeah, the Levado sepia wash. And then uh, after that, I go and brush a flat brown over it, and then I let that dry. And then I hit it with a pale sand, or sorry, skeleton bone color. Uh, army painter and then I go back in and wash that again and then I blot off the ink in a particular pattern to kind of get uh, it ends up looking sort of like this mud effect here so um, it's got a couple stages you know and uh, I'm starting to learn how to do some weathering and and that's kind of uh, one of the things that I've come up with uh, I kind of like the mud look um, so that's that's got to be done and you'll notice that I have the figs done for the tank like as I mentioned I am no painter um, so let me just rotate this around, and this is what I did to attempt to to um, match uh, Jamie's work. So uh, there's the dude, you know, driving the tank. Uh, so my first real attempt at painting a 28 mil guy. So hopefully it uh, it's not going to be too shocking. And then I got this guy right here who's just popping out um, to uh, man the machine gun. So that was my. Uh, my attempt at painting and uh, my attempt to, uh, you know, match up the great figs that are already on the uh, on the table. So uh, there's the update, guys. And like I said, I'm going to continue working on the tank. And if I get that done tonight, I will show you what that looks like.